A project to build four Habitat for Humanity homes is delayed. We have details from this week's meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's Thursday, June 23rd, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. A Habitat for Humanity project to build four affordable homes in Marston's Mills is on hold for the time being. This week, attorney Warren Brody presented plans to the Zoning Board of Appeals, hoping for an approval. The site has access to electrical service, and it also has access to town water. The homes will each be serviced by individual septic systems and individual, <coughs> excuse me, wells or town water? Town water, town water not wells. The project will adhere to all state and town health regulations. We're not seeking any waivers in that respect. We propose to subdivide the lot into eight different lots. And I would ask that you look at the plan at tab C to get a sense of that subdivision. So you will see that there are lots one through four, which will be the house lots which are all roughly three quarters of an acre. Then there are unbuildable lots, labeled lots five, six, and seven, which will form a buffer between this development and the neighboring houses. Lot eight, which runs along the eastern side of the entire lot, is planned to be deeded to the abutting neighbor you might notice that there's a driveway, there's an existing driveway located on part of that lot. And rather than get into any regal, legal wrangling over uh, adverse possession or prescriptive easement or anything of that nature, we're simply deeding that parcel to our neighbor and being a good neighbor, we hope. Uh, a preliminary draft of the deed for that has been provided to your staff. If you turn to tab D, you will find preliminary plans for the houses to be built and a tabulation of each of the houses and lots. All four homes will be three bedroom homes. They will all have full basements. They all have a ranch design. And the reason we use the ranch design is that it is easily adaptable to households with disabled members if that is needed. We can adapt them readily for a disabled person. We are also hopeful that we can include solar panels in our build, although we cannot yet commit to solar panels because of funding issues that we hope to resolve. Some members of the Zoning Board of Appeals raised concerns about property upkeep and the storage of multiple vehicles on the property. Habitat for Humanity's land acquisition consultant, Lee Darazola, countered those concerns. And I think uh, to take a step back, I think some of these questions are coming to the concept of neighborhood maintenance. And I'd like to bring in the Homeowners Association, which we will, with four homeowners, a road and open space there's common areas we have put some very serious work into our homeowners association documents over the last couple years we have interviewed past homeowners to find out what worked and what didn't we feel we have very strong documents and part of the education that warren discussed is an education on what it means to be part of an association so it's not just, oh, you've built your house, here are your keys. People understand the legal documents, what it means, how to structure meetings, what they are responsible for. Plowing um, is typically the big one. Um, and I mean, it doesn't sound big, but it's an important thing to agree on and the documents serve to control that habitat offers the education on the homeowners association and also stays with our homeowners for the first year and it can be longer if we're requested to make sure they get off to a good start just like any homeowners association needs some help 
Um, we also work with a professional management firm, um, and that's part of our homeowners association documents. And that firm does some of the legal filings, which you know a homeowner might not know about. And also the feedback we got from previous associations was the fee collection, that it wasn't comfortable always neighbor to neighbor fee collection. Um, so that we felt was a very positive aspect of having an external management association as well as their expertise. Specifically the homeowners association documents um, before closing oftentimes the zoning board will ask for uh, Habitat as a developer to submit them. We're happy to do that. Um, they would, part of our comprehensive permit, would um, label the lots five, six, and seven as open space. Um, lot five specifically would be a do not disturb, as would lot, I'm sorry, where are our other open space lots? Seven. Six and seven near the seven. front. Lot six and seven also unbuildable. Um, we would strive to not have landscaping that needed maintenance because again that just why create difficulties um, so did I I've sort of rambled on did I answer questions so will there be rules to Robin's point about cars or number of occupants in the homeowners association documents? there will be rules in the homeowners association from a policy perspective habitat likes to keep it what we call light touch we don't want to create overly onerous regulations our homes or neighborhoods just like the neighbor next door so if there is a rule and regulation bylaw in the town of Barnesville that says you can't have 17 cars in your yard which I believe there likely is that's the rule that applies yeah. so we don't create specific extra rules unless there's a site condition we have a tight site in Chatham it's very tight and we do have some regulation on parking at that site Following a lengthy discussion about the project, Zoning Board of Appeals Chair Brian Florence said he could not vote on the project until he gets more information from town engineer Roger Parsons. Habitat's Lee Darazola asked the board to reconsider citing time constraints. We are on a very tight timeline with the Community Development Block Grant which is in conjunction with the town of Barnstable. We made some promises about our ability to perform and that goes to the town as well as, and I think I'm getting the words right, the sub grantee. So we are looking to keep this moving as quickly as possible and I'm querying our attorney here on whether we know we're going to agree with whatever Roger says. Um, is there a way to get a vote that is pending Joanne maybe you can help us here uh, I, I think um, mr. chairman the applicants I understand the applicants concern on the um, CDBG time frame I'm I'm happy to report to the board that that's not as urgent as as I think the applicant um, understands it to be and uh, the the idea is that there has to be people in those houses uh, within a certain time frame okay. and I think a continuance in my opinion uh, as uh, the supervisor of the administrator of the program continuance to the next hearing uh, with the potential decision at that time would not um, I interfere with that we would, okay. we would be fine with that um, from that aspect of it. Okay. And ultimately the board did vote to push back the vote another two weeks until the next meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. We'll be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program Barnstable this morning weekdays at 8 a.m. On tomorrow's show we will learn all about the Hyannis Fourth of July Parade. We'll meet some pets looking for their forever homes plus we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.